Thanks for joining us for the Fight for Your Marriage podcast with Charlene and Lori. This is a place where you can find hope for your marriage through Jesus Christ. We are so excited that you're with us for another episode of the Fight for Your Marriage podcast. I hope that you have taken the opportunity to listen to the last episode that was released. If you haven't, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to it when you're done with this one. Um, It was about facing obstacles in your marriage, and we talked a lot about how to overcome obstacles And for some of you, those obstacles happen um, day after day when you have a spouse in your home. And for others of you, those are obstacles that you face because your spouse and you are walking through separation or divorce. But regardless of where you're at, um, there was something for everybody in that episode. So I want to encourage you to go check it out. Um, We're excited to be here today. I'm here with my mom, Charlene. Hi. And I'm here with Kyle. Glad to be here. And we are excited today to talk about the past and to talk about uh, the future and to really celebrate because we're um, announcing today officially that we are starting the celebration of our 30th anniversary of Rejoice Marriage Ministries. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. This year marks 30 years of Rejoice Marriage Ministries being um, in existence. And I know that you guys did ministry long before Rejoice started. You were doing ministry um, one-on-one with people, but this is our 30th anniversary of ministry. So we're very excited about that. I just want to tell you, when we started discussing doing this podcast, I went down memory lane with myself and, and I just have had an um, amazing week or two of just remembering all that we, Bob and I have been able to do, traveling and, and meeting people around, you know, around the world. And we went to London one time, and I just want to tell you that um, God has blessed us abundantly, uh, sharing Rejoice Ministries' heart of God can return husbands and wives and children from uh, a lifestyle of being a prodigal. It's been an exciting few weeks going backwards and remembering everything. So today we wanted to talk a little bit about where we came from and what we've done. And it's fun to kind of like go down memory lane a little bit and think about the things that God has accomplished in Rejoice. And then also we have a huge announcement And so stick with us. And at the end, um, we have an exciting announcement and a way that you can get involved with us. So um, we're excited to share some news with you. With all that being said, I I prepared a couple questions just to uh, spark some conversation and and to think back about what Rejoice was and how it started out. So question one, uh, this is for you, Charlene. You were doing ministry, obviously, way before Rejoice Marriage Ministries was ever really – thing. So tell me about kind of the first Bible study that you had with some women in your church and and the community that was like and the community that you found with them. The very beginning, um, what I did is I asked several friends who were, I knew, to come over to the house and we did a Bible study at home and talked about our marriages and so forth. And then I went to my pastor and I said, there are some women that go to our church that are having marriage problems, and I want to know if we can do a Bible study, a Sunday school class. And then we, we started a Sunday school class, and he said, since it's going to be smaller, I think I would like to have you do it in my office for a while uh, before we make it official. And I appreciate that he that was his response to it, because he didn't have anybody teaching a class like this. He knew your topic was going to be helping people that had marriage problems and helping them understand about restoration and fighting for their marriage. And um, dad has mentioned in books in the past that the reason the pastor did that is so he could be part of it and just kind of hear what was being taught, hear the conversations. And I think that's a great oversight and of his And he church. also didn't want... The women didn't want my class to be listed that they had marriage problems. He wanted to cover he was, their nakedness. Right. And so it was uh, done 
in a way that they would not be labeled. Right. And and we talked about that on our last podcast about pride. And it's hard to stand up and say, hey, I've got a problem. I need help. Um, but there there's definitely freedom in admitting things like that because you can get the help you need. And there's creativity uh, with pastors to help you uh, get um, to talk to them and to say, here, let me get a few people together. Then the blessing was the class grew. Then we got our own classroom on Sundays. What kind of spiritual growth did you see with some of the women in that class? Oh, it was tremendous. They were hopeless in their marriage with the circumstances. And I shared my story and shared what God was doing or did do and was uh, still doing in our marriage. And I said um, that there is nothing, nothing regard of any, regardless of any circumstance, nothing is too hard for the Lord. And he is going to be right with us all the time. And we just need to lean on him all the time throughout our day. And this is taking place in the late 80s. So there's not a cell phone in everybody's pocket. There's not you know, um, access to Google like we have now where we can literally find out anything in seconds. It's really a time where people were dependent on going to their Christian bookstore to find resources. And, um, you know, cassette tapes were the thing. Yes, and, they were. And so it's it's powerful to think that we have such access now to information compared to the access that was available then. And I'm wondering if we're utilizing the information we have access to now as much as we should. I think that the one thing that they did more maybe than we do was they read the Word of God more fervently. Yeah, I would say right now I think that's something that people might have a struggle with because with easy access, sometimes comes laziness. And so all of us have the the phone in our hand, in our pocket, and they have a Bible app on there. And we can literally have the Word available. But I think sometimes it's overwhelm for people. Like we have so much coming at us now, so much information to set aside, you know, the 300 sermons that come to your inbox from a variety of speakers every week and just say, I'm going to get alone with the Lord. Um, it seems like when things are stripped away from our lives, we're able to focus more on what's important. And I think that is what was happening in, in those women, you know, back then. I had a scripture back then that God had given me, and it was Luke 145. And it says, blessed is she or he who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Luke 1, 45. And that became, for me, is believe what the Lord is speaking to your hearts. That's a really cool story. And, and just seeing your obedience in God, you know, tugging on your heart to start this and then just taking the action steps. There might be people listening today where God is, is tugging on your heart to start something similar, a Bible study with a group of friends. Uh, just go after that. Don't don't sit on that. Just follow that that pull that God has for you. Kyle, one of the stories that comes to mind when you say that is um, shared in the book that um, my dad wrote called Looking Back 25 Years, where he talked about the previous 25 years of his life. Um, he shares the story of the early days of the Charlene Cares devotional. And Charlene Cares started out as a type devotional that you all would print and mail to people. And then um, they got a website and it was distributed by email to people. But it still was not, you know, you were blogging like before blogging was a thing. And there's a lady that we know in Washington State, and she worked at a coffee shop at the time, and she would print out copies of the Charlene Cares devotional when she would get it, and she would share her story of standing with the people that would come to her coffee shop, and she would give them a copy of the devotional that day. And um, I think like what you're saying, Kyle, that's such a neat way to just figure out what you can do to share Jesus with others and to give people hope and go do it, whether that's leading a Bible study in your church, 
um, sharing a devotional with somebody. You know, you don't have to print out copies. You can just forward it on to them right now. But figure out a way that you can encourage people and then do it. That is positively right. And that would be so much encouragement. I know uh, I've heard so many stories from men who work outside or work um, together um, doing different things at their employment. And at lunch, when they take a break, they may say something about they're having some difficulties at home or with their children. And that gives an opportunity for uh, some of the people that have come to rejoice that have scriptures and know what to say and encourage them and give them hope. Yeah, exactly. You know, back in the early days, um, you know, we were talking about the 80s. And I know in the beginning, we would laugh about how you would keep notes of the conversations you would have with people and just what their prayer requests were um, on a piece of paper. And then you'd punch holes in it and stick it in a three ring binder. And I mean, I've never seen a person that loves a three ring binder as much as you do <laughs> to, to this day. <laughs> She she loves the three ring binder full of papers, but that was the way you you know kept track of the women you were coming across and and how to pray for them and things have evolved since then you know with how how you keep track of the prayers and the things that come in. Um, another thing that was birthed back in the beginning of Rejoice Marriage Ministries was the encouragement phone line. And people could call into this phone number every day, and every 24 hours, you or dad would change the message on the phone line and share just a 60-second little tidbit of encouragement, a Bible verse with them, and just give them a way to dial in and and get that hope for the day. Because we do not have a website like we have right, now. Right, exactly. That can, you can get anything and find anything. They're in such volume. So uh, we did do that, and I remember doing that. And that, to us at that time, was huge so that they could get something, just a tidbit of hope and encouragement that day. And now we see what God has done and expanded this ministry uh, to be able to reach around the world. Yep. That's really cool. Really, really cool story. Uh, when you were in the midst of your marriage struggles and, the, and standing for your marriage, did you ever think that there would be a time when you would use that story to help thousands of other people? And, and when was that realization? What was that like when you when you decided, like, hey, this, this story could be great for other people to hear and know and, and encouragement for them? No, I think Bob made a very big effort to give me no encouragement uh, because he was— um, living out of town, and he was traveling, coming down and seeing uh, a, a special friend. He had a um, girlfriend, and he would, um, whenever he talked to me, he gave me no encouragement because he didn't want me to even think he would ever come home. So you were not thinking, I'm going to someday be serving God with my husband restored. You were thinking, I, I don't know if this is ever going to work, but I'm standing here to be faithful to what God's asked me to do. I knew the Lord had spoken to me right. and was speaking to me. And so I felt I had to finally do what I needed to do, was make a total commitment to the Lord without seeing any evidence of Bob saying, oh, I I'm hang in there. I'm going to be coming home in a couple of years. Let me get my head on straight. I mean, it. I needed to be strong I'm by myself with the Lord, and that's when he started giving me so many different scriptures. And that's the definition of faith. After you were restored, what was the moment like where you decided that you were going to start Rejoice Marriage Ministries? What, what led up to that decision? After our Bible study class at church, I saw the need was not just that church and that it, there were other people that they had friends that had problems and I got the burden and, and saying, Lord, how can we help other people? And around the same time, Dad had his own experience. Um, and I think he calls it a Damascus Road experience because— I was just going to say that. He shares that his heart was not necessarily out there thinking, I'm going to put my infidelities and my sin out for the world to hear about— and let me share with other people to help them. He didn't have that same burden. He was happy to share with a couple people, but he didn't have that burden. 
at the time through his job, he had to go to a, an emergency room. And as he was at the emergency room, he saw a man that walked in in the middle of the night with stomach pain. And he got very good at identifying people and and understanding what their situation was by listening. And so he heard the man tell the admitting person he didn't have a permanent address because he had just moved out of his home. So he was living in a hotel. He didn't have any insurance. He didn't really want the doctor to call his wife um, because they weren't really in good communication. And so he was assuming, you know, that this man might be a person who's recently walked out of his home or been kicked out of his home and um, was going through something that, you know, he had been through himself when he left home. And so when he walked out into the parking lot after doing what he had to do in the emergency room, he saw two cars and one car had a bumper sticker on it from a local church. And the other car had a bumper sticker on it with one of those, you know, my child's the student of the month at whatever school. And so he was so impacted by this man and by seeing him there alone at two o'clock in the morning with no wife with him and nobody to call, you know, who, who do we call in case of emergency? And he had nobody to list. And he said that um, as he drove away from there, that God really laid it on his heart that he could write a book about divorce to help other people. And he said, within five minutes, I feel like God had given me the name for the book. And he said it would be called Prodigals Do Come Home. Amen. And he Amen. went on to write that book. And, you know, he came to share his story of sinfulness so that other people could be changed by it. And it makes me think of the verse in um, Revelation where it says that um, the enemy is defeated by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And it's so important to tell other people what God's doing in our life and what He has done, but also it's important to come from a place of healing. You know, He didn't say, I'm going to write a book about prodigals coming home two days after you were remarried. You know, he allowed those scars to heal that he had in his life, that you had in your life, so that you two could both share in God's timing, you know, from a place of healing. And um, I remember when that book was being written, he had sent it to many publishers. He had written letters after letter after letter trying to see if somebody would publish this book. And he got rejected, rejected, rejected. And you could think, oh, well, God's shutting the door. You know, he doesn't want that book written. But what ended up happening was another marriage ministry Correct. in Colorado Correct. took the book and printed it. And he ended up giving the rights to the book. Back to us. To, well, he gave the rights to the book to the marriage ministry in Colorado, Correct. thinking, here's this book I wrote, do what you want with it. And, and then years later, right. he... he the the uh, owner said, "You know what? You you have a ministry now, a marriage ministry, and I feel I need to give back the two books that you've given me to to publish and and use back to you to have, for your ministry, which was a huge miracle. And it was just all part of that patience and waiting on God and being faithful to his timing and understanding that things are not going to happen in our timing. You know, you write a book, and I know many of you that are listening have tried to write your story or to write an article, and it gets rejected by people, and you face similar plights. But if God's going to use that story and he wants it out, he will work it out to get that story out. Oh, he will. And, and let me say also if you want to write something, think about doing a daily devotional, one of the guest devotionals we have weekly. If you have something to share, there's a place to start. Don't be silent when God is speaking to you. Yes, we love when people share devotionals. Yeah, that's an amazing story. And seeing how God, too, kind of at the same time aligned what you guys were thinking, uh, just in perfect unison, is, is really, really cool to hear. Um, tell me about a time you were a part of someone's remarriage. Yes, we have. And two that I remember a uh, long time ago was we had a, um, a Rejoice Ministry conference at our church, and people came from out of town. And there was 
there was they were there was one couple that could not afford a wedding. So on Saturday evening, we um, had a pastor and and had some, them um, remarried. Yeah, and, it was a neat at, way to close out a conference to have them you know renew their vows in front of everybody that attended. It was amazing. It was so encouraging for the people there, but it was so neat to see a restored marriage get remarried at a marriage conference. And and see that God uh, does heal and restore marriages, mm-hmm. and and have that happen at that conference. It was a, a huge blessing. And there's another one that really sticks out to me, Lori, is that when Dad married somebody at the beach, they wanted a beach wedding, and so um, and they asked if Bob would mar- remarry them. We went and had a group and invited everybody of the rejoice to come to the beach that could make it on a Saturday, I believe, morning. And we've remarried, and Bob uh, remarried another couple that got restored locally. Yeah, that's super neat. I remember that. And they have a great testimony. And we love getting the invitations when people do like official ceremonies, getting the invitations or people will send us their pictures or videos from their ceremonies. And that's encouraging to us. And yes, I keep that. Yes. (laughs) Yes, we love that. And just like yours, you wanted a big ceremony. Yes. And you didn't get it. Right. And it worked out okay. So, what are some ways that you were able to kind of get the word out about Rejoice Marriage Ministries when you were first getting started? One of the ways that we proclaimed in the beginning was through billboards. And I know that you and dad, in the beginning of the billboard era, were on a Rejoice on the Road trip and you were speaking in different cities. And you passed an empty billboard, and he called the number and tried to find out how much would it be to put a billboard up in this random town and found out that it would be, you know, three to five hundred dollars a month. And after sharing the story of Rejoice with the owner of the billboard company, they decided to offer you three hundred and fifty dollars a month for the billboard and a one year contract which at the time was a huge financial commitment right? to, to and do that. it was, we got so convicted when we traveled that we said, imagine if you have billboards in different cities and states across the United States proclaiming that God heals hurting marriages. Yeah. And that just became a huge... Um, burden for us and an excitement that we even said to our people, do you want to put up a billboard in your own area? That was another way that we wanted to proclaim. We had the burden to tell everybody, and how do you do it? And the Lord spoke to us as we were traveling with a billboard. I remember that some of the billboards we put up said, there's hope. God Heals Hurting Marriages. There was another billboard that said, Honey, come home. The kids and I love you. Mm. You know, a variety of things. And they went up in different states, you know, from California to Tennessee. And even in Florida, we were able to get one a few hours from, you know, our... Near Orlando. Yes. Uh, near Orlando, there was a billboard. So um, that was a neat way that Rejoice was being spread for people that were driving by and seeing these signs. And that just energized us to see how God can spread the message by ways we could not even imagine before. Yeah. It was just amazing. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of those Rejoice on the Road events, when you would go on the road, you guys would like to meet up with people and have dinner with people and try to say, hey, we're going to be in this city if you want to get together. Correct. I know at one event a few years ago, we were up in Virginia and we had met up with a group of men and women and we're having dinner at a restaurant. And our waiter was asking, you know, what, what, how do you guys know each other and what are you doing and, and what's this all about? And so some of the people that were with us were sharing, like, you know, how they knew us and what Rejoice Marriage Ministries was. And then he extended his arm, and on his forearm, the whole length of his forearm, it said what God had joined together. And then it had Mark 10, 9, 
written underneath it. And everybody was so well, we excited. We were ecstatic <laughs> because we couldn't believe God would give us a waiter that really envisioned and had such a, a commitment to marriage to have it on his arm. And here we are, a marriage ministry with people that are praying for their marriages to be restored. So they were all ecstatic. Yeah, they were happy. But it just goes to show you, you know, going back to what we were saying about sharing your testimony, you have no idea who needs to hear your story and what God's done in your situation. And so don't be afraid to share that. And it might be with one person, one-on-one at church, and it might God might give you the opportunity to share it with a group of people. But don't ever shy away from sharing what he's done in your life. One of the people that came to me when I started standing was in my church, and she came to me after church, and she goes, can I ask you a question, a personal question? She goes, you keep going up every week to the altar, and she goes, can I ask you, what is your special need that you keep going up weekly? And I said, oh, I would be honored to tell you. I said, we've we've gotten divorced, and due to my lack of faith and believing God could restore our marriage. And so um, I've repented, and the Lord has turned me around to pray for Bob to come back home. And I'm, I'm, and she goes, well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be praying with you from now on that your husband will come home because of your faithfulness. I just see you so faithfully coming up and praying every week. Um, I'm, I want to be on your team for doing that. That's neat. It shows you people are watching. They uh, definitely are more than we'll ever know sometimes. Well, thank you guys for kind of taking us uh, on a trip down memory lane and then kind of the, the roots of Rejoice Marriage Ministries. And and in the future, we'll go over some of the stuff that, that we do today and some of the stuff we will be planning on doing in the in the near future. Um, but that was just a joy just to, just to go over and talk about some of that stuff. Oh, it's exciting. And I could go on for a long while with all these different little <laughs> stories. I tell you, it, it is neat. And now for some exciting news, we're going to have a celebration for our 30th anniversary. Yes, this June, we are going to have a night of celebrating, of remembering, a night of testimony, a night of praising God for what He's done in um, Rejoice Marriage Ministries and in the lives of so many people. And so we are looking forward to it, and we want to invite you to join us. And so if you are in the South Florida area or planning on being in the South Florida area towards the end of June, we would love to um, have you put it on your calendar and join us for this special event. Information will be coming out about that in the coming weeks, but for right now, if you are interested in participating in this, you can sign up to be on the wait list so that you get notified when the date and the time and the location go out. So you can visit the link that's in the show notes and find out that information and then be watching your Charlene Cares devotional and your Friday weekly wrap-up devotional. And we will definitely share um, the specifics about that as it approaches. But we are very excited to gather with you and to just have a night of celebration and worship for what God has done um, in so many marriages around the world. Well, we are so excited. And I just want you to know that what we're going to be doing, God is going to be doing for you. Don't give up on your marriage. If we can help you in any way, we invite you to visit the website of Rejoice Marriage Ministries at www.rejoiceministries.org. Thanks for joining us today as we proclaim that God heals hurting marriages.